Hey, BookTube, how's it going? Um, sorry, I my thing froze a bit there. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do today, I've been promising a, um, a review slash wrap up for a little bit now. So I thought I'd um, go ahead and do that. But I also have a one book book haul um, that I will throw in with this as well. So um, that's interesting. So um, first, let's talk about this. Um, I've been kind of dipping into this. So this is Rare Science Fiction, um, put out by Belmont. Um, edited by Ivan Howard, um, with this cool cover that looks like Josh Brolin at the bottom there. Um, so this is science fiction prize winners. Um, I, I don't know what, I wish I knew what the prize was, but anyway, um, so in this book we have, um, El Spring to Camp, Milton Lesser, um, Algies Budries, maybe? I don't know how to say that. Charles V. DeVette, Alice Bullock, Rob, Robert Silverberg, Jim Harmon, and M.C. Peace. Um, so, so far I just read the Elspring to Camp story in here called Let's Have Fun. Um, and it's, it was kind of weird. It's, basically a um, story about a guy drinking himself to death in a bar um, way in the future and telling this story to somebody about um, this horrible secret. Um, basically, they were... Um, Earth was making some peace packed with some, um, alien race, and, um, this alien kid had been living with this guy and his family as a part of, um, the peace talks or something, and this, like, gang of ruffians, like, rough kids, decided that they were going to um, show that alien what's what. And it's this commentary on parenting, basically. Like, because in the book, um, they couldn't discipline the kids because there was this big fad of not disciplining children going on. Um, and something bad happens... And it's so bad that if the alien race finds out what happened, they would probably pull from the peace treaty. But they can't really do anything with the kids. Um, so it was just this, like, kind of you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't kind of situation. And it was okay. It wasn't, like, a bad story or nothing. Um, it was probably better than I'm making it sound. I have the L Sprig to Camp. Um, issue as um, certain Conan fans do. Um, I'm trying to be a little more loving towards Mr. DeCamp because I don't know if Conan would be the Conan of today. In fact, it wouldn't be without L. Sprague DeCamp interfering no matter how fucked his interfering interference was um a lot of people probably wouldn't even know who conan was if it wasn't for the camp so um you take the good you take the bad you take them both and there you have the facts of life so um yeah rare science fiction so i'll be dipping um more into this as i go um i also um have a um, Max brand audiobook that's like a bunch of shorter works of his. Um, and this story I'm going to tell you about right now is called The Sacking of El Dorado. Now, this was so cool. It started off so good. Um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't like the ending. 
Um, I was pretty upset about it. But anyway, so this story, it's a Western, okay? But it takes place in the West, but it starts in New York and in the city. And this guy's a gambler, and he was um, cheating on cards, but no one could ever figure out how he did it and all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, then the place they're at gets raided by the cops, and he takes off running, and this cop tries to stop him, and um, he pulls out this little tiny gun he had on him, shoots the cop, and takes off running. So he knows that being in New York probably isn't the best thing for him. So he just starts heading west and um, taking trains to here, taking a train to here, blah, 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 keeps going, keeps going until the train don't go no farther. Um, and so then he is just kind of like, okay, now what the heck do I do? And he comes across this um, older gentleman on a horse and... The guy's being really suspicious of him, and so he's being suspicious back of him. And they're doing all this, like, kind of back and forth stuff and being really weird about it. And then he sees this guy's little, um, what do you call it, a derringer? Like the little tiny um, guns that people would hide on him. Um, and he was like, the cowboy was like making fun of it. He's like, you shoot things with that? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, this really works? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, you could try it if you want. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's got some kick. I never thought a gun this size would actually do anything. So let me do all these tricks. So he does all these gun tricks. And um, I'll just go a little bit further. So he does all these gun tricks. And the guy um, shoots himself in the chest with this little gun. And he like can't believe that he had done this stupid, idiotic thing. And he's like, oh my god, I'm dying. I can't believe this. And he's like, do me a favor. Can you please just, like, take me off? Um, like, just drag me off this main plains area into those trees right there and bury me. Um, please, you know? And so the guy's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take care of you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and all this stuff. And he's like, take care of my horse. He's like, I'd rather you kill my horse than anything, but I know you probably won't, so, um, you know, just take care of my horse. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. And so the guy dies. He goes to bury him, and he's like, eh, I should probably check his pockets first. The dude's got some money. He's like, oh, cool, I could use some money. But then he pulls out this, like, wanted poster, and it's a wanted poster of the guy who's dead. And it's like dead or alive, like a $25,000 reward or something ridiculous like that. And he's like, no fucking way. So he, um, he's like, screw that. I'm not burying the guy no more. So he takes him, puts him over the horse, rides into town and the town that's closest is El Dorado. And, um, he's like, yeah, I want to collect the bounty on this guy. And they're like, who do you got? And he says who, who the guy is and nobody in the town will believe him. And they're just like, Jesus. And so the guy, being the gambler, um, is like, well, I gotta bluff my way through this. So he had, like, this, like, crazy story. And, um... So everyone in the town was, like, mortified at this guy. This little, tiny, weaselly little dude. And they started giving him nicknames. Like, I, th I, can't, I think it was Bad Eye. Like, Bad Eye or Dead Eye or something like that. And um, he's like, wow, I could, like, gamble with the people in this town and no one would be the wiser. They're not going to catch on to the really advanced stuff I do. So basically, he ends up, like, running the whole town. And um, I would say, like, oh, man, I'm kind of telling you a lot. I don't want to ruin it for you. But honestly, it's not ruined. Like, so much other stuff goes with it. And it's so cool. And then it just ends in a way that was very dissatisfying to me. I didn't like it. Um, but the story itself I loved. So, The Sacking of El Dorado by Max Brand. Um, super good. And, what was this one called? Let's Have Fun by El Sprig de Camp. Okay. Now, um, for those of you who know of Costco... Costco is a big box store that has all sorts of crap. 
um, and usually big piles of that crap that you have to go through. Um, and I found a gorgeous little book there. So I will show it to you now. This is an Encyclopedia of Tolkien, the history and mythology that inspired Tolkien's world by David Day. Um, it's leather bound, very nice um, embossing, I guess that's what you would call that. Um, gold pages, uh, a little bookmarky thing, tons of illustrations. I want to see if I could do this, like, and show you all this stuff. This book is just beautiful. Um, really cool. So it's it's an encyclopedia of things from Tol Tolkien's world, and then where David Day thinks that those things came from. So, like, right here, this is um, a passage on Odin. Um, yeah. So all sorts of Steward of Gondor, um, Sampo, Samwise, the Shire. So it's all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> so let's see here. The spellbinding world of Middle-earth is full of beasts and battles, heroes and heroines, and the struggle between good and evil. Tolkien scholar and best-selling author David Day's four decades of research informed this compelling encyclopedia about the lands, inhabitants, languages, geography, and the history of Middle-earth. This volume on Tolkien's world also includes over 200 illustrations, an appendix that examines the legends that were key sources for Tolkien's creations, the Volzunga saga, the... Oh man, Nibblungenlid and Richard Wagner's Ring Cycle. Might be Wagner. No, Wagner. I, I like Wagner. You notice how Zoe chimes in just when I say something stupid? That's nice how she does that. Um, it's got this really nice spine that's kind of. Um, Encyclopedia of Tolkien DVD. Um, is this Canterbury Press? Is that what this book is? Um, it just says San Diego, California. Oh, Canterbury Classics. Is it Canterbury? It's Canterbury, <laughs> babe. Canterbury. Um, did you guys know that Canterbury Tales is actually called Catterbury Tales? Is that right? Or wait, no, that's not it. It's that Chaucer's name is Chaucer. That's what it is, right? Yeah, everybody knew that. Everybody knew that except me. I thought there was an N in there. For years, just saying Chaucer. Chaucer. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if I told this story here or not. I just told it to Zoe, but I'll tell you guys too. So a long time ago, um, when I was making movies and stuff a lot, um, this actor that was in a bunch of my movies for my birthday got me um a book on um that was like a screenwriting book by um David Mamet and when he said that I'm like oh dude oh I'm sorry this is kind of embarrassing but um it's pronounced Mame and he's like oh shit really is it's man I'm like yeah it's David Mamet he's French and he's like, shit, I totally didn't know that. Oh, man, I've been sitting here quoting this guy. I think he's amazing, and I didn't even know where he was from. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's Mame. So then the whole rest of the night, he was, like, walking around talking. Oh, yeah, Mame! And I was, like, cracking up the whole time. So that is what I get. I get Zoe making fun of Chauncer to me for the rest of my life for telling that poor chap that... Mammoth's name was Mame. Yep. And then I went, Mame! Like Al Jolson? No? Okay. Alright, guys. Um, let me know down below um, what you think of the Max Brand story, if you've read it. It's awesome. Definitely check it out. If there's any other Max Brand stuff that you're like, ooh, you need to check this out, let me know what those are down below. I've read a few of his books, but um, that wasn't very long. 
the sacking of El Dorado. So um, I'm going to see if the um, audiobook I have has a like more like novella size things. Um, and if you've, if you have this rare science fiction, tell me what you think of the rest of it. Um, and if there's anything in here that is like something you should definitely jump on or that I should. Um, and if you got that encyclopedia of Tolkien, um, let me know what you think of that too. So I will see you later. Bye-bye.